Welcome to part two of my making of series. Today we are going to discuss specifically the pros and cons and workarounds of using AI generated images in medical art and teaching. And so what I said last video was that the key thing to understand about AI is that it's easy to learn and fast to use. So anybody can get into AI, for example, with Dolly 3 or Mid Journey. And by tomorrow, they will be creating pretty decent images. However, it's less accurate in creating depictions. So don't expect very anatomically correct images. It creates poor results for specific topics. And thus, it's good for art, not so much for teaching. And we are going to see what we can do around about it as well. So, with AI image, it's a bit about how much we can generate and how much you can use of the images you've generated and less about getting it right the first time. A lot of people write me, for example, on Instagram asking me, what are your prompts? Which prompts do you use? And although I do use stable diffusion, I usually focus most of my work on Dolly 3 and with Dolly, it's not so much about the prompts. It's more like a talk. You are requesting an art to an artist. So you shouldn't worry that much about the prompt. My personal process is way more iterative than scientific, so to speak. So rather than trying to get the specific prompt, I start with a vision in my head. So for example, some years ago, I was on Dubai Miracle Garden, uh, where there are many topiaries. For those that didn't know, topiary is the name for those bush sculptures. So someday I was thinking about what I could possibly post on my Instagram, and it occurred to me, what if there was some topiary similar to those I saw in Dubai, that actually depicted anatomical organs, for example, an anatomical heart or lungs, for example. And I'm not sure exactly what people who ask me this expect, but you are not going to get great results by asking AI generate a creative image of an anatomical heart. This may sometimes get uh, interesting results and can even experiment with it, but usually start with the vision. Try to imagine in great detail exactly what you expect. So how high is this topiary? Okay, so I was thinking about something like five meters. Are there people around it? Well, I guess so. I guess it would add more credibility. It would make it look real. Does it look like a photograph? Is it a painting? No, no, it's a photograph. Okay, are there other topiaries around it? What age are the people? What color is the topiary? Is it made of grass, of green foliage? Or is it a flower topiary? Get it very clear in your, in your head before you start creating it. Start with the vision and then try to achieve, to materialize the vision in the software. And so you go into the software and you ask, for example, I tend to start with a very simple and concise prompt. So for example, I go into Dolly. You can also use Bing. I personally have been using both Bing and the paid, paid version of OpenAI's ChatGPT. And I go into the Dolly 3 tab and simply say a topiary depicting a surgeon operating a patient. And then I will check the results. And maybe, for example, the results were a bit too abstract. And then I will go there and ask it, make it more photorealistic. And then I see a topiary, but it's just one meter high, for example. And my original vision was for a topiary that was five meters high. So that's what I said, start with the vision. And then I will ask it, make it five meters high. Then it creates a topiary. But I ask it, for example, for a topiary of a kidney, and it created a topiary of a pair of kidneys. 
And then sometimes I have to ask myself, do I really want a single kidney? Or would I like to change my vision? But I would much more recommend you to go in with a clear idea of what you want than going blind and trying to see what you get. And so some problems we will find here are, for example, unrequested associations. So here, for example, I ask about a cave that resemble an uterus. I think my prompt was something like this, and I don't know what you think, but for me, this resembles a vagina way more than a uterus. And the point is that has to do with how AI works. It's not a real person. It's just trying to build something that matches your input based on the images it has previously seen. So, if you do a search on Google, for example, Google Images, and you ask for uterus, you will see that most of the images show the uterus in a specific position along with the ovaries. So, you will see that usually when you ask Dolly Tree for a uterus image, almost invariably it will also show the ovaries. And even if you ask for it, please remove the ovaries, it will often not comply. Why? Because it was most likely not trained on enough images of uterus without ovaries. So it does not know accurately to differentiate between uterus and ovaries. For it, uterus and ovaries are a single package of the image it has seen on the images it has been trained with. So here, the reason I asked for a uterus and got something that resembles a vagina is most likely because while the image was being trained, many images of vaginas were shown in association with the word uterus, perhaps because people were looking at the uterus from the vagina, for example, when approaching on a hysteroscopy or something like that. But it's important to understand that the AI may make associations you wouldn't necessarily make yourself. Second point, weird combinations. Here I asked for a mosaic made out of food. And it actually, a mosaic of internal organs, I believe, made out of food. And it actually showed a mosaic of a person with internal organs surrounded by food. But the mosaic isn't food itself, food is all around it. You will get weird results. Learn to ignore them. Just try again. And sometimes you have to give up on your original idea entirely because you just can't make it work. However, sometimes you get a weird, ugly image you can work with. For example, this is a weird combination. AI sometimes mishmashes different images and creates something that, while anatomically correct and potentially usable, sometimes looks a bit grotesque. Uh, it gives a whole new meaning to growth anatomy. <laughs> so uh, here my question is, what's wrong with her upper abdomen? And the point here is, sometimes you get an image that pretty much matches your vision. However, there is something wrong with it. This is the time for you to perhaps, instead of trying to create the image from the very beginning, try to start from what you already have and go into image to image. Now, you see, when you talk about AI, we have predominantly two types or three types of generative models, if you want to talk about it really simply. When you want to generate something entirely new, such as an image or a video from basically nothing, you can either input a text or an already existing media. So you can have, for, exa for example, text to image, which is so far what we've been showing you. I can ask it, I want an image of a 250 meter high hand statue by the sea and it will generate it to me. It's generating an image from my text. 
I can also use image to video. There are some apps such as Runway, for example, that allow you to generate image video from text. But here we're mostly talking about images. And you can also have image to image or video to video or image to video. Forget about video right now. I shouldn't have talked about it. You can also have image to image, which means I'm starting with an image that already exists, either a real image, a drawing, or a, an AI generated image that's ready. And I'm going to do something to it. I'm giving some command on how to alter it for the AI to generate another similar image. So what I could do with an image like this one, for example, is tell the AI, I want you to preserve this image, but change this area I did not like. So I would ask it, for example, to remove her navel here, to remove this weird scar looking thing that's going towards her torx. Uh, to begin with, her navel is not in the right place. And also this line between the rectus abdomen is, just looks weird. So I probably just change her upper abdomen and her lower torx. And I could keep everything downwards. And the way I'm going to do this is either on the internet, either I could go, for example, on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever your favorite search is, and just go and search for in-paint or in-painting or in-painting AI. And you probably find some kind of online tool. And this is, so to speak, the simple version. And you can also use a more elaborate tool that will give you a lot more flexibility, but will also require more skill, such as downloading stable diffusion on your machine, for example. And then you input your image, this image you have already generated, and you will select specifically the region you want it to modify. So what this tool will do, the, depending on the tool you are using, is to change the image using AI, but just the part you have selected. So you're going to select the part you want to change, and then you are going to run the AI again, and you generate, and you generate many different new altered images, and you can pick your favorite one. And if there's still something off, you can get this new image, select the part you don't like, and run it again and again. And that's part of the reason why I say it's much more iterative than scientific. When I create my images, I'm more often thinking about how I can perfect the image until I try to converge it to my original vision, rather than trying to create the perfect prompt that will lead me there. Because you are not forced to, to create an ident a perfect prompt or to get it right the first time. So long as you achieve your final result, what you wanted, no matter what path you took to get there, your result has been accomplished. So you shouldn't worry that much about which tools you are going to use or in each order. If it works, it worked. Of course, I have some suggestions, but you can try to uh, iterate with your own version. Here is another example. So here we have an example of an anatomy fail. AI has been getting a lot better at drawing anatomy. Uh, some time ago, when I started using, for example, Stable Diffusion, I started in version 1.5, on Stable Diffusion 1.5, and the hands were hideous. Uh, for whatever reason, the way the generative model was created did not allow it to understand that some things are set. For example, the, numbers, the number of fingers on a hand or the number of eyes on a head, for example. This is the kind of intrinsic intuitive knowledge for us humans, but not so much for a machine. It's only an algorithm, it's not a sentient being. So we know that, for example, while people's noses and faces vary in shape and size, every single person in the world, 
at least theoretically, has fine fingers on each hand. The AI was not granted this specific knowledge that you should have five fingers on your hand. There are some workarounds for it. There are many kinds of LoRa's and people created control net and there were open polls um, mechanisms. And these are all workarounds created by the community to integrate, so to speak, to add knowledge to the model. What these uh, add-ons are doing is pretty much telling the model, do your thing, but within these parameters. Every human should have five fingers on each hand. So create a human, but keep this in mind. However, this is less and less necessary because newer versions of AI generative models such as Dolly 3 tend to be better at generating the most basic, the most fundamental anatomy. So usually with Dolly 3 you get the correct number of fingers on each, on each hand. Not always, not necessarily the correct number of toes on each foot. So uh, here is an example when I asked for some kind of cathedral that was being held by a pelvis or something like that. And it gave me a quadruped pelvis, <laughs> a pelvis, pelvis with four legs, a four-legged pelvis. This one might be a bit harder to correct. However, if I were to try to correct it, I would simply erase the legs on the back here and I'm pretty sure I think it would look some, something like a normal pelvis, albeit the number of toes is still wrong. Something that could also be corrected. Once again, part of the idea, should I discard an image or should I try to iterate upon it and modify it to achieve my vision is how important is your vision, what's the magnitude of the project you are working on, and how easy would it be to get a similar image. For example, if you are working on a paid project, you got a contract to develop a, an AI image for a campaign, for example. So it's actually an important project, you are getting paid for it. And you manage to create an image that looks just like what you would want, but it has an extra set of legs, for example. You should definitely try to correct it. You are almost there and this is an important project for you. Now, if you're just creating something to post on Instagram today and you've generated 20 nice images and there is one that looks a bit weird, just discard it. There is no reason to waste any time on it. Here is another example. This one I might try to correct because I think it somewhat looks nice. It's a 150 meter high hand statue by the sea, uh, hand bones statue. And you can see that the reason it got it wrong is because it's in an unusual position. The hands like forming a fist and the fingers are bending a bit inwards. But if you count the number of fingers with attention, you come to the conclusion there are most likely six or seven. So another anatomical fail. Something else entirely. Text. Beware of text. This is how I created my logo, for example. So sometimes you do need text. Sometimes if you want to create a logo, you just have to endure. But you need a lot of iterations and regarding my logo specifically, I also went artisanally. I also went personally on GIMP, which is a free version of a Photoshop-like uh, software. It's a free uh, image editing software. And I personally went there and did the necessary modifications for it to be legible. Because AI has a hard time creating text. Is it able to create text? Yes. Is it easy to create text? No. You need many attempts. You most likely, likely need to go in by hand and fix things after you are decently satisfied with the result. 
so it will probably take a lot of work and it probably took me more than a full day to create this, these logos. AI uh, image generation is also prone to hallucinations, just like text-based AI like ChatGPT, for example. Just like you can ask ChatGPT what was the war of stable diffusion, and sometimes it will give you an answer that has absolutely no grounding, that's completely made up, but it will give you it in a convincing way. It's what's called hallucinations, because once again, AI is just generating the most likely answer to you. It has no concept of truth or accuracy. It's just that in real life, the truth is the most likely answer but not always, and so sometimes the text-generated models will give you hallucination, hallucinations, and so will the image-generation models. So here I asked, for example, for ants carrying different organs, and you can see there is here a liver, a heart, a kidney, kind of, a pair of lungs, and a... I have no idea what this is. Uh, this is not an organ, at least, <laughs> not a human one. But the way I try to compensate for this is to be specific in what I want. So I usually ask for ants carrying um, human, anatomically correct human organs between parentheses, a liver, comma, a heart, comma, a kidney, comma, a pair of lungs, comma, and uterus, close parentheses. Don't leave it to the AI. Don't ask for the AI for uh, a pile of anatomically correct organs. That tends to generate terrible results because it can't differentiate between a real organ that exists in a human and some hallucination that could come, from, for example, from a sci-fi movie. So whenever possible, try to specify what you want. If you want lungs and a heart and bowel and uh, kidneys and the spleen ask for the organs. Now, the limitation here, of course, is that the more words you add to a description, to a prompt, the more likely it is that the AI will ignore part of it. So there is something of a limitation of the current generation. Can you create an image of 12 different organs in line? Perhaps, but I think it's unlikely to work out well, because they will probably not obey all your commands. If you try to list all the organs, it will probably ignore some of them. And for those it ignores your commands or tries to make up, they will just look weird. What you can do in this specific situation, if you really want to use this image, is go once more into image to image and use infill to substitute specifically uh, the organ you did not like. Then you could go into infill, select that organ that does not exist, and ask, for example, for it to generate a miniature uterus. And maybe it will look decent. It's a possibility. Sometimes if you really want it, it can, it can work. Some images generated by AI are technically not bad, but they may be unusable because they are disturbing or controversial. You will probably have a lot of problem with these kind of things when creating uh, medical images with AI, because first, the AI softwares will block a lot of our prompts because they have safety policies that, for example, do not allow for overtly explicit displays of blood. And also, it will most likely refuse to do anything that's genital related. So, forget asking for an anatomically correct vulva or penis, for example. Most likely not going to happen. Even if your interest is scientific, Unfortunately, that's the way the terms of service of these softwares have been written. You can download stable diffusion and run it on your machine, and then you can create images without these limitations, but once again, you have something of a 
pendulum of a balancing act there. The less limitations you want to have on the artistic side, the more technical knowledge and expertise you need. If you want to create something in a very simple, easy and fast way, you most likely have to contend with the software limitations. If you want to be very free in your ideas and create something very elaborate and very complex with no limitations whatsoever, you most likely need to be an expert on it. Uh, so this is an example of an image that AI did generate, but then you get into the second problem, which is what you're going to use these images for. Because I often post them to Instagram, for example, and even among uh, medical students and doctors and other healthcare workers, people will still be bothered by particularly unpleasant images. So they will comment that it looks weird or that it looks a bit unsettling and it may be negative for you to post these kinds of images to your audience. So you also have to be mindful both of your, if your prompt is going to work and if the generated image is going to work for our audience. And going a bit back towards prompts, uh, something I've noticed is that even in the same platform, even using the same model, sometimes the way you input the prompt changes the result. So for example, Dolly used it through Bing has different results than Dolly used it through ChatGPT in censorship inclusion. So sometimes if you try to create an image, I want to create a river of blood with blood cells uh, floating on it and often generative models will block you because they don't want to create overtly explicit blood images and that includes, includes a blood river. What you can try to do is try to generate the same images on the same platform using the other input tool. So if you were using, for example, ChatGPT, go to Bing. If you were using Bing, go to ChatGPT. It won't always work, but sometimes it does. So why not try it? And here, another anatomy fail. I could probably go into which anatomical structures AI is good or bad at depicting. Usually the smaller and more specific the anatomic structure, the worse the results. But rib cages are an exception. AI is terrible at depicting rib cages. So here I asked for a rock formation that resembled a rib cage by the sea, something like that. Not very good. The conclusion of this all is that AI generates less accurate depictions, it has poor results for specific topics, it's good for art, not so much for teaching, but if you need to correct it, using InPaint is a decent uh, solution. It's also sometimes unable to comprehend some specific commands. Sometimes you just have to give up on generating an image and maybe you want to draw it yourself if you can, but sometimes it's impossible to get AI to understand exactly what you want. Here, for example, I asked for a topiary depicting human muscles, and it gave me a human muscles statue covered partially in foliage and grass. And it actually looks quite beautiful, and I posted this image, I use it, but it's not exactly what I asked for. And I tried rephrasing the prompt, I tried iterating on it, and I just couldn't get to work. Sometimes AI just can't understand a somewhat more complex command. It will also sometimes create things out of proportion. Here another anatomy fail, for example, from a thyroid. You can try requesting it a different image. I don't think in painting here would work, because it's occupying a too large part of the image. However, part of the reason this happened is because the thyroid is a smaller organ, something a little more delicate, a little more specific, and that increases the chance of the eye getting it wrong. So, not very good for teaching, but if you need the image, try to use in painting. 
On the next video, we are going to see which AI image generators specifically can use and the main ways you can generate your image. And don't forget, this video is sponsored by myself. You can also get my clothing, merchandise and apparel with my own images on my store. And if you're watching this after February, it's probably already working.